How's it going, internets? I hope you're having a lovely day. It's that time again. It's time to get creative. It's time to get those imaginative juices going. It's time to get some animation in. And it's time to get inspired. And today's inspiration comes from uh, the ever-inspiring uh, Arthur Rackham. If you're not familiar with his stuff, um, do you like Guillermo del Toro? Do you like Tim Burton? Well, this is a guy that inspired those guys tons. If you uh, look in a lot of their interviews or a lot of their personal work and stuff, they'll uh, reference him quite a bit. And uh, he was an amazing illustrator in uh, mainly in the 30s, um, but his stuff really um, helped define uh, the fantasy and um, illustrative uh, genre uh, at the time for sure and so I'm just gonna leaf through a couple of his amazing illustration work over here but I just really love his composition I like the kind of muted tones where you really uh, do a lot of grayscale with just a little bit of highlights and color I know when I do tend to do color illustration stuff um, I tend to really uh, favor that that style myself where it's really more about the um, illustration uh, drawing solid drawing style and then a little bit with the color but that uh, kind of the warm uh, subtle colors really pull that out as well and just flip this through to the next page here um, this is just a little PDF I'll throw a link to it in the comments if you guys want to check it out too um, but it had some great illustrations in here I mean the anatomy is so solid in all of this stuff but you can tell that there's just this sense of whimsy or uh, fantasy deep fantasy behind it I was reading um, an interview with uh, Guillermo del Toro where he talks about um, uh, in Hellboy there's that great uh, tree and he always referred to it as a Rackham style tree and I thought that was a great uh, tribute because his stuff is just so uh, nowadays you might say it seems very um, it's kind of a strange choice of words very vanilla like this just seems very you know this is a typical kind of illustration but at the time like the stuff he was doing was just phenomenal he really laid all the groundwork for for ton tons of the uh, fantasy illustration uh, world and I mean it just solid uh, just regular illustration as well too but I love his his line work is uh, spot on his composition is amazing and it's just really creative stuff um, but I mean this stuff this is this is just uh, you know there's not really a ton of fantasy here but it's just solid drawing great hand posing you get a sense of expression here I really like the flow of this too you got a lot of blank space over here and over here but it just flows really nicely and you just get that sense of you want to know what's going on beyond here too I really like it when it's not always just cropped in everything with white spaces on the edges but you know you got the sense of it's a bigger image here you got the tree up top and you've got the rest of the the flowing gown behind just some great phenomenal stuff I mean there's tons of characters in this stuff but anyways I could go on and on about Arthur Rackham I could only um really find a little bit um for for quotes or, or um, actual I usually try to get actual stuff that the the content creator would have said themselves not stuff that was said about them um but I did find this one and it said like the sundial my paint box counts no hours but sunny ones and I thought this was an interesting quote. Um, I think there's a lot of ways you could take it, but the way that it spoke to me personally is, um, as uh, if you look at a sundial, there it, it can only tell you the time of day that it is while the sun is up. And I think, um, to me, the way that he's saying this is, um, is the the times that you spend creating are good times, and the rest of it. It might not be that great, but you can always remember those times when you're doing your content creation, whatever means it is, whatever medium, if you're music or web design or sculpting or painting or whatever it is, you always remember those times where, where you're really getting creative. Not necessarily every time where you're just working, but where you're really getting creative and you're, you're honed in, those times are always sunny times or good times. And I think for me, that's what this, that's how this quote speaks to me. But I think it's a little ambiguous too. So um, let me know down below uh, if you think, if it means something different to you, because I think it's a, it's a great quote, but I think it'll be taken a lot of different ways as well. And I'm just gonna leaf through a couple more of these illustrations if I can find any more in there. I really like his stuff. Oh yeah, there's one more I wanted to share with you guys that I saw in here when I was doing the preliminary one. Um, this one right here, I don't know if you guys have ever seen Howl's Moving Castle. 
Um, but this reminds me a lot of the turnip head. If you put a little turnip there, that with the way that it's laid out and everything, it seems very, very similar to, to that kind of a character. And I wonder if that was an influence at all, uh, whether conscious or subconscious, because that, um, I mean, this was the 1930s, so it's definitely before any of that stuff. But I really love this. I mean, look at how this tree is such like a human. I love that. I love that. And it's got such solid drawing and such a great hand pose and great line of action throughout. Mm. Anyways, definitely check out Arthur Rackham if you haven't. I know I would love to uh, grab a ton more of his books. I did lose a couple that I had um, a while ago when, in the storage facility debacle of 2011. Um, but uh, I've always loved his stuff. It's just a, a really solid influence and a great source of inspiration for myself and hopefully for you guys as well. So that being said, let's get in um, into today's animation. And today we are using the um, Bit Rig. It's a free rig you can grab over from Creative Crash, and I will link to it in the description down below for you guys. Along with, uh, I'll probably link to a book on Arthur Rackham or at least a Wikipedia page or something, so you guys can go um, on a a Google inspiration search of your own. Um, so anyways, if you're not familiar with the series, what we're going to be doing for the rest of the video, uh, we give ourselves 48 frames, that's two seconds of animation, and uh, see what we can come up with. I've never used this rig before, so that'll present, I'm sure, some new, um, some new challenges to overcome. And I try to every day find a different rig to share with you guys as well. Although, um, lately I've been thinking of pushing it more towards um, trying different finding a rig that I'm really comfortable with and doing different animation exercises to share with you too, just as a different um, different kind of content, because I think uh, different rigs are, are fun, but I've hit a, a good wall of, of all the ones I really wanted to focus on for free rigs. There's still a few that um, I probably pull up, but that's probably coming in at least in the next month or so. We'll probably switch more to that style, or still be um, probably around two to six seconds of animation. Um, but we'll be looking more in depth at uh, longer shots, more than focusing on different rigs every time. Because I think we've we've got through probably two months, three months of a uh, catalog of different rigs every day. So that's that's a good good place to go uh, for now. So that being said, um, like I said, we're doing 48 frames, a little bit of over the shoulder, just kind of hang out with me while I animate. Uh, hopefully, uh, get a little bit of instruction along the way, a little bit of inspiration, and. Um, if you guys do end up uh, trying out this rig, which I'll link to below, um, definitely share it back because I'd love to see the animation you guys come up with as well. So that being said, let's uh, dive right in. Uh, and before we get started, we just want to turn off everything except for NURB curves, NURB surfaces, and polygons. So we're not keying anything we don't need to. And let's create a polygon primitives. Let's create a cube. And then uh, for this one, this is an interesting rig. And I have kind of a funky idea for, for this one. Um, if you look... Uh, here you can really stretch these legs out and everything so if that works right I'm thinking he's gonna do a couple of steps and along the steps the legs just keep getting longer and longer so he keeps getting taller and taller and that way he'll kind of look down and maybe have a little bit of worry as the legs keep stretching out like something maybe he wasn't aware of like maybe he's a baby kind of robot and his legs just kept getting longer and he wasn't used to that this could be something to, fun to play with if that doesn't work out we can always stick to more of a vanilla kind of a thing or uh, figure out a different personality quirk that will make it interesting but i thought that might be fun to try out and um also it's, he's got these uh, kind of funky little arms here that can move in different ways so we might see if we can find a different fun way to loosen those up as well um, just uh, play around there um, so let's go ahead and save our file here just uh, file save scene as and we're just gonna call this as soon as it'll load we are using uh, Autodesk Maya 2014 today uh, which there will be a link to in the information below as well and they do have newer versions I just tend to try and use little bit older versions because they tend to uh, use less system resources while I'm recording as well. And let's go save this as uh, let's just call it bit block and save scene. And remember when you're working, especially if you're sort of new 
to uh, Maya, you're gonna want to save multiple uh, versions of your file and to save often. And by often, I mean like every five, 10 minutes, save a new version just in case, because you might've gotten something really, really polished and really looking nice, and then you lose it or you bust the rig or something. And if you didn't, if you only saved last hour, that's an hour's worth of animation you're never gonna get back. Because it's unlike, you know, paper you don't have a hard copy of this stuff so it's always good to save like I said multiple versions and to save often okay, let's just start nailing in that uh, good starting pose here and let's go ahead and tip those back Okay, normally rotate X is back, but evidently it's going to be Y for this rig. And those. Let's see. Rotate them forward. And this the neck. I think I'll just do this one. slightly wider gain here. And that's uh, one good tip that I mention often, but I don't think I have in a while, is um, definitely you want to angle the toes a little bit more inward or a little more out when you're setting up your um, initial starting pose so you have uh, something just a little bit uh, more varied than your initial T pose. And it's just something that gives a little more uh, that character there. It's not like even a neck rotate though. Do we have a neck? I guess that kind of works. Let's see here. I thought that would focus in on that, but that did not do. Okay, I think that's, uh, let's do a little bit with the hands. Maybe well. You know what, I'm gonna create a new camera. This camera angle is kind of funky. Okay, and this perspective, let's look through the camera. There we go. And then again, we're gonna wanna turn off that thing. So, okay, that transfer 
but sometimes it does it. Sometimes you have to reset off what you're going to show in that particular camera. That seemed to work all right. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into these fingers here. Throw those ones down a little bit. It's just good to get um, everything kind of started off in more interesting pose so that way while you're animating you start to get the foundation stuff you still have some character and everything in there if you nail it all in right away. That's fairly good to start off with. So let's go ahead and save our file again. Control S, continue. And I might switch a little bit of that up. It's so weird that the knees don't really bend, but that's okay. We'll keep it where what it is for right now. And we'll go ahead and grab everything, set our frame range from 0 to uh, 48 here. And let's grab everything. Go to frame 0 and hit S to set a key. Now let's go ahead and pull up, uh, bear with me one second. Window animation editors, let's pull up our graph editor. Pull that down here. Come on here. Zoom it up. Let's make sure that looks about right. All right, and pop that off. Okay, so now the graph editor should be down there so you guys can see that okay. And let's start laying the foundation for this lock now. keep this on 12s because I think that our timing is going to be fairly vanilla but what's going to make it interesting is going to be if we can do those legs at the right way. Again, we're just laying the foundation. This is just going to be the uh, feet and the hips for the walk. Because once you get that settled, you got the bulk of your walk, really. I mean, all the necessary information. It's like um, if you're making a cake, the first thing you want to do is, you know, mix the eggs and then get the cake batter all ready. And then once you have that, then you still have a whole bunch of things to do. You have to decide how many layers of that batter do you want to cake mix you want to do, how much you want to bake it at, what kind of frosting you're going to use. There's tons of things uh, after that, but the first thing you want to do is just really nail that. Yeah, let's see. I just really want to get those hips feeling right. right make sure they're nice and balanced there. Let's go ahead and look at the Translate Z. Let's clean that up a little bit. And this is going to be the um, left to right movement on the hips, and we want that to be consistent. We might tweak that up a little bit, though, depending on um, how we end up approaching this. But I think for right now, that's going to be what we want to do. And we're just going to look at these and make sure they seem a little balanced.
just a middle mouse button and set another key just to copy that there. as well. And we're going to go in and we're going to tweak it a little bit. Because we still want to add a little bit of up and down even as it's going so that we can still feel some of that weight there. So we're going to go ahead and key every six frames just along the curve we already have and then we'll go in in our graph editor and we'll pull down every other one. I'm just going to feel like this head doesn't work as well as I would like it, so maybe we'll give it a different angle. Just from that side angle, it doesn't I don't like the way it's moving. Okay. Overall, it's kind of getting that feeling that I like. Let's go ahead and save it, and let's get those uh, steps working a little better. And so we're just going to go in and key everything we have one more time just to make sure we got everything that we want keyed. Let's go and raise it up. Set that there. Now because we don't really have like a bend in these legs, it's just a stretch. It'll make that these legs, these steps interesting as well. side and again we're going to go in and we're just going to key all of these such varying heights between the steps, so let's go ahead and kind of even that out a little bit more. Maybe we can have a little bit of a gradual increase at the steps though. I wanted to do something so that there's kind of a, that change of shape there. I don't think I needed to do anything in Z or X, so I do I do.
so I'll just leave it the other way. That's all right. As long as it works. And let's go ahead and get into this guy. And set that there. And set it where it is. We just want to lock in all the frames where we want it to be where it is. And then I'll lift it up here and translate it. Let's see. Let's go ahead and compare the two and try and find a good uh, medium here. And the nice thing is you can usually find a good medium because you'll have a couple that are a little high and a couple that are a little low. So it'll give you kind of a good base of what you're going for by going in there. Let's look at our translucencies. Okay, we just kind of want to find it good. If one's a little lower and one's a little higher, probably want somewhere in the middle. with this one, do a little bit of inward rotate, and pop it up. Okay, well, let's look at the other one here. And again, we'll do a little bit of rotate inward, and a little drag back. And we'll drag back, and we'll rotate inward. Let's go ahead and grab the root control and let's start getting a little bit of side to side here. Favoring the planted foot. Favoring the planted foot. Favoring the planted foot. Again. And then back again. And let's go ahead and clean that up here. We don't need too much of that, but a little bit so that we can feel that there's some little bit of weight shift. So let's see here. And then let's do a little bit of rotate. Just do it again, so that will favor those weights, that weight of the body moving those hips. And again, we'll scale that back a little bit more. And it's always um, something I haven't mentioned in probably a couple weeks now. Uh, it's always good to over-exaggerate and pull back rather than continue to push up just a little bit, a little bit when you're animating. And let's go ahead and get into... chest here. Offsetting those moves that we did in the hips here. And then we'll zero them out here. Again, maybe we did a little too much, so let's just kind of pull it back. And that's a little over seven, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and see that now. Let's go back in here, and we'll rotate a little to favor the more prominent step. Just going to be that side, that side, that side. And let's go ahead and minimize 
use that again. So I just want a little bit of that in there. And this one seems like it's got a little bit of a mix of the two. Um, I like it when it's more pure. This is left and right, this is up and down, and this is angled, but sometimes you get a little bit of mix. If you notice when it's turning the hips this way, there's a little bit of tilt to that turn as well. So I gotta be careful of that. I usually tend not to do as much when you get a controller that works like that than when you don't. And then again, we're just gonna rotate to offset what we did with the legs here. So since that front forward foot we're uh, favoring the hips that way, the arms are gonna do the opposite. swing and a little right swing. And that's fine if that's kind of, uh, you know, if you're going for someone who's got uh, a reason why their body would do that, or a reason for the story to make it that way. But if you don't, then don't bother doing that. trying to loosen this foot up as much as I can where I can. We'll drag that this little cuff here, push it forward. Kind of a little bit of flop, flop on that cuff. Snap to it. Maybe that's a little too much. We might scale that back a little bit more. depends um some people label things as as different per rig like one might say the toe bank is a drag the other might say that's the one where it's angled on it one might say a toe lift is where the toe actually lifts and one might be where it means that the heel lifts because the toe is pointed down it depends so that is one of those things that by using um, a lot of different rigs and getting yourself more experience with different rigs uh, it becomes just a little bit of uh, testing the waters there to see how this person approached um, a rig versus another person. And there's no real right or wrong. It's all just, uh, I mean, it'd be great if there was one universal thing that meant this always is this and this is always that. But um, the people who make rigs are artists and um, creators themselves and amazing ones. And I appreciate them. I think they're phenomenal. Um, and each one has their own touch and their own you know, view of what this means versus that means. And let's go ahead and look at that uh, toe FK on this one again. Yeah. Find a good medium so that we're not having one toe that's really slams and another toe that barely moves at all. I want to 
gonna try and find a good, and they don't have to be exact because we don't want them to be complete mimickers of one another, but we want that same kind of feel throughout. This is a little more pose to posey with the arms than I usually do. Six and hold that for a few frames there. It's kind of like a what? No. Okay, and let's go ahead and look at the other arm. We'll kind of do a similar thing, but we'll mix it up with the timing and the posing a little. See, we've got a little bit of an overshoot there, so go up and back a little bit.
pause that. Uh, one second here. Okay, sorry about that. Let's just take a quick break. One thing is, I feel like we're getting a little too much left and right. Let's get this started a couple of frames sooner. So Thank you. 
Shoot it all back in here. In the elbow. Fourth elbow. fingers here. Let's go ahead and grab all of the tips, and I'll go ahead and delay those frame. And let's grab the pinky, and delay that frame. And let's grab the uh, index, and we'll push it.
This hand one more time. Here, I do want to pull that out a little bit. And let's go ahead and grab all of the tips. It's all good. The other thing I want to do is grab this guy. This guy. This guy. And this guy. And look at the rotate. I believe it's Y's on here. So I'm going to hold it for a few more frames. Maybe even pull it back a little bit. Can I anticipate that look down further? So it kind of leans back and then goes into it.
me see if I can get a little more up and down on our translate Y. So let's go ahead and crank those a little bit more. Pull these down just a little bit. So, different than that, where there's none. So there is some sort of... Let's try to give him some happier eyebrows here. I think that works alright. I can keep tweaking and playing with this for a long time, but I think that sold that idea pretty well. So it goes over, kind of looking a little bit down, and closes his eyes, really looks down, and it's a little shocked that his legs are so long. We go from little guy, he's kind of looking at his feet, to totally looking at his feet and shocked. I think that works pretty well. Alright.
so let's go ahead and just uh, save our file here and let's take a look back at where we started today we were looking at Arthur Rackham and uh, he gave us great really it's really thought-provoking I think it definitely makes you think about what what do you think the meaning is behind this quote and most of the time I feel like um, the stuff that I that I find for quotes from illustrators is pretty straightforward but this one's a little open-ended so I think you can find your own um, meaning in here and I'd love for you to, to let me know what this quote means to you um, down in the comments below like the sundial my paint box counts no hours but sunny ones I think it's great I think that's I don't think there's anything I could say um, above and beyond that I think it's a great way to end that I'm just try and count the sunny ones all right you guys have a wonderful day thanks again for watching thanks for all the likes and subscribes you guys are making this the number one daily animation and creative uh, show out there on the internet because I don't think anyone else is doing one, so we're number one, right? All right, awesome. And that makes you guys the um, number one community of all time ever. So, uh, love you all. I will see you uh, tomorrow for some more animation.